This is the first program in the Electrical Maintenance and Inspection series. This collection of programs focuses on specific maintenance and inspection practices to help you do the right amount of maintenance on the right equipment at the right time. The techniques we offer will help you lay the all-important groundwork for a condition-based maintenance program. CBM, also known as predictive maintenance, is a widely recognized system for optimizing plant maintenance. Using a real-world database that reflects the true conditions under which equipment operates, CBM enables managers to schedule maintenance to get the most from plant equipment at the lowest cost. Given the fact that we're here to talk about maintenance and inspections, it might seem odd to begin with a module on electrical safety. Well, long experience has taught us that if a plant isn't operating safely, then maintenance or equipment savings are meaningless. Safety really must come first. So we begin with a brief overview of the major considerations of electrical safety that will come into play throughout the inspection and maintenance process. First, we'll look at the nature of electrical injuries. Then we'll look at the types of accidents that occur most frequently. And we'll consider four essential rules for working safely with Instead of buying new gear, companies are having to learn how to safely extend the useful life of the equipment they already have. So maintenance becomes crucial. But how much maintenance and when? This program and the rest of the electrical maintenance and inspection series will answer those questions. We'll demonstrate the proven techniques that successful companies are using today to achieve compliance while reducing downtime and extending the service life of their electrical equipment. Historically, there have been several approaches to plant and equipment maintenance. Preventive maintenance, for example, involves various procedures to keep equipment from failing prematurely. These procedures may include lubrication, Improper lubrication is the primary cause of electric motor bearing failure. Lubrication must be in the proper amount and the proper type. And the type depends to a great extent on where the equipment is and how it's being used. Insulation testing. Once we have a clear idea of the exact condition of insulation, we can come up with a remarkably accurate estimate of how long it will last. Protective device testing. This means make not necessarily the last word in good engineering design. It does provide an excellent set of minimum requirements that serve as the basis for good design. But the system is far from flawless. Problems frequently occur, usually because the code requirements are misinterpreted or misapplied. In this program, we'll talk about some of the more common examples of this and how you can inspect your own facilities to make sure these dangerous mistakes are not being made under your roof. Obviously, we cannot cover every item in the NEC. We've chosen to focus on industrial and commercial services and to point out key areas where inspectors commonly find trouble. Let's begin with a look at basic service requirements. From this point on, when we use the term service, we mean the connection between the utility conductors and the end user conductors. Service entrance conductors connect the utility feed and the customer service equipment. This equipment consists of the panel board or boards which control and connect the electrical energy. These panels may include circuit breakers, fuses, or explosive materials are themselves clustered into groups. Class 1 locations are those in which, for one reason or another, you could encounter flammable or explosive vapors. Areas designated by the National Electrical Code as Class 2 locations are areas that are hazardous because of combustible dust. 
The third and final category of hazardous locations is Class 3, made up of locations that are hazardous because of easily ignitable fibers or flyings. These materials are hazardous for two reasons. They're easily ignited and fires spread through them very quickly. The code requires that equipment used in any of the environments we've described be approved for use in that environment. So, any electrical equipment in use in a hazardous environment in your facility must be approved for Class 1, 2, or 3 service. It must also be approved for the specific type of material in the area. And any approved electrical equipment will have a temperature rating. When the equipment is in service, the surface temperature must never rise above the allowable temperature for that service. In each studies first. Perhaps the two most important types of engineering studies, and the ones we'll first consider here, are short circuit analysis and coordination studies. The National Electrical Code says that any equipment that's intended to break a circuit at fault levels, a circuit breaker for example, must have an adequate interrupting rating for the application. If it doesn't, it could rupture or explode under a fault current load. We begin a typical short circuit analysis by determining the available fault currents in the power system. Then we determine the interrupting capacity of all breakers and fuses in the system. Although this information is sometimes available in company records, it usually has to come from direct inspection of the equipment. The picture becomes a bit more complicated, however, when we add in the let-through value of energy. Just because a fuse or breaker can interrupt high levels of fault current doesn't necessarily mean everything is safe downstream. Let's say, for example, that this transformer has been tested and listed at 25,000 amps fault current for two seconds. Here, upstream, we have a breaker listed at 42,000 amps interrupting rating. The available fault current is 25,000 amps. This is a bad match unless the upstream breaker trips in less than two seconds. today, but we can lump them roughly into three categories. Low voltage small molded case breakers, larger low voltage power circuit breakers, and large circuit breakers for medium and high voltage service. The beauty of a breaker is that it can safely serve two functions. It can serve as a switch, allowing us to connect and disconnect a circuit as a control function, and in the meantime, it quietly serves as a 24-hour safety device, set to automatically disconnect when it senses a short-circuit condition. Breakers are remarkably dependable. But if breakers are not maintained, their failure rate can reach 50% or higher within a five-year period. By failure, we mean they fail to operate as they should. The most common type of breaker in service today is the molded case breaker, the molded case serving as a one-piece insulator. Only a qualified person should undertake an electrical inspection. This process requires special skills and equipment, and only well-trained personnel should do it. All OSHA safety regulations apply. The first step in checking...